Welcome to the Rocket Right Show, starring Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar. Two busy blondes with their fingers on the pulse of all things Louisiana. Events, health, leisure, entertainment, and more. It's the Rocket Right Show. And now, here's Betsy and Kay. And welcome to Rocket Right. We are so glad that you decided to spend a little bit of time seeing what me and Dr. K. Solar, two busy blondes, are doing all over Louisiana. And if you know us, you know we love to talk about food. Food is love, and so we love to talk with great chefs and business owners, and we're going to be talking with Nick Huff, Brett Monteleon of several different restaurants, Junior's on Harrison, Overpass Merchant, Gail's Fine Ice Cream, and Curbside. We're going to be hearing a little bit about what they have going on. We're also going to be joined in our second segment by Danielle Landry. She does their marketing, and there's so many cool things that are happening, and the way that Huff Marchand is expanding restaurants throughout South Louisiana. And then we're going to be talking with uh, someone who's been on the show before, James Lee. He's going to be talking about a bipartisan group that is a watchdog to hold people accountable for what they're responsible for, called Louisiana Swamp Watch. And then we also have another young lady, and she's going to be talking about her cottage tea room with her grandmother. It's Sarah Ulmer with our grandmother Loretta, and they are mentoring kids in central Louisiana near Greenwell Springs. And so we're going to talk to them about their program, what they're doing a little bit different, but first, we're going to talk foodie. That's it. So I'm so sorry that Dr. K couldn't be with us for this segment, but she'll be with us later in the show. So tell me a little bit about how you got started, Nick Huff. You, we met several years ago when you yep. did some fundraising yep. about wings, chicken wings, yes. and that worked out really well. Yes. But you have grown your brands and the restaurants that you own and operate, sure. as well as some new concepts coming up. Yes. So yes. tell us a little bit about what's going on in the world of Nick. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure if you want to you get in that brain. Uh, no, it's, it, it, it's not me. You know, I'm, I'm not growing it. It's yeah. it's Chef Brett. It's it's Danielle. It's our amazing corporate yeah. team. Um, it's it's everybody from from the dishwasher all the way up to to our director of operations. Is mm -hmm. everybody's bought in, and and I think it makes it a whole lot easier. It makes my job a whole lot easier. Yeah. Um, you know, to to be able to grow and and provide the people that work with us um, mm -hmm. opportunities to be able to grow. So uh, you're so the maestro. Crazy. You're the maestro I, of this orchestra. I guess, you know. My, yeah. my business partner, Lon, he, he does the music. So yeah. <laughs> he, he may be more the maestro. But yeah, you know, it's, it's been a fun ride thus far. And that'd be Lon Marchand. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And so then I got the pleasure of meeting you at the Louisiana uh, Seafood Cook-Off, yep. held just a few weeks ago in Lafayette. And so Chef Brett uh, Monteleon, how did you get involved with Nick? And how did you start, uh, you know, cooking good stuff? Uh, starting out was in college. Um, I had to get a job, right? And so I started. We all a, do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> started as a dishwasher, um, and then kind of worked my way up through the years, and kind of fell in love with the business. Um, moved yeah. around uh, a little bit, and in that time, I'd, I'd met Nick when um, through a friend when when Nick was doing curbside the truck, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of stayed in touch through other people mm -hmm. and organically came together and. It just all kind of worked out. It's great how, so, it, how it went. So you are kind of overseeing all the different foods that each of the different concepts. So they're all very different. So I kind of like, you know, for both of you to kind of run through what started out as a truck sure. with curbside yeah. and then has now evolved into some really great dining in New Orleans and in Baton Rouge. Yep. Uh, it's like the repetitive story. Walked out of a bar my sophomore year. No late night food, bought a trailer, started serving burgers, and, and kind of fell in love with the business. Uh, yeah. So the original was, was curbside burgers, and that was, uh, the original was Moochie's, but, but the one after that was curbside. It was, we're yeah. serving burgers, we're serving them on the curb, why not call it curbside? Uh, and I always wondered about the name, so Yeah, thank you. so just from, from the truck, you know, yeah. it, was, it was curbside burgers. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, we, uh, you know, I, I did a couple stints in New Orleans and, and worked with a restaurant group there and mostly culinary on the, on the backside, running a couple restaurants. And um, I had the opportunity to partner with, with Lon uh, on the old ZZ Gardens. 
Which is now the overpass. Which I love ZZ Gardens from way back in the day. Yes, yes. Uh, We've got some homages. Best location for the St. Patrick's Day Parade, which to me is the best St. Patrick's Day Parade in the state. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, 100%. So actually, Pat Mm -hmm. uh, started the the parade in in the Merchant. Mm -hmm. Walked over the bridge and then came back, and that was kind of how the... How the parade started, but yes. Anyway, uh, yeah. So we opened opened the Merchant in 2016, and then we opened Curbside late 2016. Two restaurants in one year, which was uh, kind of a turning point. Of if we could do that, we could we could sort of do anything. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, we uh, we went to New Orleans. Uh, Started getting into pastry and, and ice cream and, and making, mm-hmm. you know, stuff from scratch. And uh, mm-hmm. we thought there was a niche as we started to, you know, kind of investigate the, the sweet market in South mm-hmm. Louisiana. Uh, and then that's kind of where, where Gales came about. So, that's awesome. Yeah. So when did you open Juniors on Harrison? We opened Juniors. Near two, Lakeview. Uh, two months before the pandemic shut down. Perfect timing. Yeah. It couldn't be better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, November of uh, like, November uh, 2019. Yeah, and you're thinking, what are we doing? Yep. And then the 20-month pandemic was farther than... But did you get into catering and doing uh, anything like that where people could pick up or you delivered or anything like you, that? Or you, you just hung on for dear life? Nah, you, you name it, and, and, and we did it. You know, I mean, a, a big part of our, our restaurant group is, is giving back to the community. I'm sure. a huge, huge believer of, you know, if you give some... If, you, if I'm going to give you something, I, I think we're going to always get it back 10 times. And, and so it wasn't... Um, you know what? What do we want during that time? It was it was frontline workers, and it was people that um, you know didn't have anything. We were we were fortunate to be able yeah. to be anchored by a great neighborhood. Yes. Cur- curbside had the food truck. We went to neighborhoods. Merchant was anchored by a great neighborhood. So so we were blessed in a sense of we're all we were all neighborhood restaurants. You know we weren't downtown, mm-hmm. um, and so there there was a bit of revenue there, and so we kind of turned our efforts towards the frontline workers, and I think that was sort of the moment when we. We started feeding frontline and hospitals and and yeah. kind of going that route it, it you know that i think to this day people still remember who who kind of was was giving um back i to think the that's community. very true yeah and i think there was probably a lot of clients you would not have had otherwise oh, because 100%. you know you're jumping into their workplace yep and then also there were so many sponsors yep. during that time for food yep. so you know if you can make it through the pandemic and stay open yeah I really think unless your building is blown off the map, you really can stay open. You right. find creative ways. And people work together in such a great way. Yep. And so then um, with with Harrison, um, with um, Juniors on Harrison, that's a different style dining than Overpass Merchant. But they all have a homey... Uh, Feel like you know the chef kind of feeling. Feel like this is good comfort food, but with a twist. That's how I would describe it. Yeah, 100%. I might be off. I might be no. off on that, but I mean, I've, I've been to all the restaurants, everything but Gales. We want to hear about Gales ice cream, yes. but I've been to all the other ones more than once, and I just I enjoy them very much, and I enjoy the service. Y'all have good staff as well. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. So how do y'all decide the difference in the menus? Or do you sometimes try something out at Junior's and then bring it to Overpass? I mean, 70 miles apart, basically. But people like to eat kind of the same palate, you know? Yeah, I think over the years, um, you know, Nick's kind of honed in on, on, you know, what people want and where. Um, and we do a lot of R&D, whether it be in New Orleans or Baton Rouge. And if we can, if we can bring a dish to each location, you know, it's easy prep. Um, you know, just getting kind of that, that, that one dish to a couple of locations is, is um, kind of streamlines things a little bit. Well, we have about a minute and a half, but I want to ask you, what are some of your favorite things to prepare? What are some of the things that you see going forward that are just going to always be a great seller that work well? In Louisiana, I think the fresh seafood. I mean, especially yeah. coming off the the seafood cook-off uh, last right. week. Um, Your I, dish was beautiful. Thank they you. didn't ask me to judge. Thank you. But <laughs> I'd be happy to taste for you. I appreciate that. But yeah, the 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 fresh fish, especially at Juniors, we were right there close to the lake. Um, so trying to keep that fresh local uh, mm-hmm. vibe going on. Mm -hmm. Louisiana seafood. Good Louisiana seafood. That's right. Well, um, we have just another minute, but how can people find you? So they can go to juniorsonharrison.com. Correct. Yeah. So we, uh, we, yeah, you can go to juniorsonharrison.com. You can go to Gail's Fine Ice Cream. I think the easiest way would be to go to huffedmarshan.com. And then from there, 
you, you can get bombarded by a little bit of everything that we do. So I want to talk about ice cream in the next segment. We'll talk with Danielle Landry. She's your director of marketing, catering manager, just making sure that everybody has everything that they need whenever they need it. We're going to talk about that. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Cortado Crunch. Cortado Crunch. Lemon berry icebox pie. Yep. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounds delicious. Yeah, they're great. Well, Brett Monteleon, Chef Brett, I really am th thankful that you're here, and I'm going to ask you to just stay over, and then we'll ask yeah, yeah. Danielle to join us. Awesome. And we're going to be right back with Rocket Ride. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes, and we'll be right back. Hang tight. There's a joy of life you'll find only in Louisiana. A spirit of celebration that takes your senses places they've never been before. Where expressions of joy are an art form and our way of life. Where an abundance of good food, good times, and great music means there's more than enough to go around. Come one, come y'all. Come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm John Goodman inviting you to visit louisianatravel.com and plan your getaway today. The use of opioids and addiction to opioids is on the rise, especially in Louisiana, and I wanted to be a part of the solution. If you have a family member or loved one that you are concerned about with regard to opioid use, please call my clinic, Advantage Health Solutions. You can speak with my nurse or you can speak with myself, and we will talk to you about how to get that person into treatment, and we'll tailor what we do to your needs, and we'll do what we can to get your loved one in treatment and onto the path to health. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser from the great state of Louisiana. Hurricane Ida has brought great devastation to our community. In time of need, Louisianans always step up and help their neighbor. This time is no different. We'll help our neighbors and friends get back as we always do. If you need help or know of someone that needs help or would like to volunteer or make a donation, go to volunteerlouisiana.gov. We are Louisiana strong. Thank you. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar since 2014, with a full calendar available on the website 24-7. Clickable links to artists and venues. View the entire weekend lineup at a glance and plan your outings with your friends. View professional recordings of local live musicians. Watch interviews with people in our music community and find additional resources. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar. chat we believe special places shouldn't go undiscovered and good stories shouldn't go unheard imagine exploring a new area while listening to amazing stories about the places and people who made it what it is today this great waterway courses through 10 states starting in northern minnesota and ending in louisiana the connectivity of the river drains 41 percent of the continental united states and carries more water than any other waterway. The fabric of America truly is woven from the common thread of the Mississippi River. This community tapas bar and grill reels in, sautés, and perfectly plates earthy yet refined flavors by marrying chic urban elegance with rustic Spanish simplicity, we transport flavors from traditional Spain fused with international taste. Over 240 different species of birds have been spotted making their homes around and in this lake. This beautiful lake is a great place for all kinds of recreation, like fishing, boating, picnicking, and a beautiful walking trail. When you discover new places and learn what the locals already know, you maximize your experience. Fill your tote with local treasures ranging from... Immerse yourself in the culture and communities that surround you. With up to 12 categories to select from, stories are delivered to you based on your interests. Trip Chat, the free audible tour guide app that helps you discover great places through authentic storytelling. So you eat, stay, and play like a local. Download Trip Chat. Then drive, walk, or run, and go find your fun. 
Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts in the heart of the Denno Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. to Rock It Right. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. Dr. K. Solar is going to be joining us in just a little bit. I'm here talking foodie with Nick Huft of Huft Marchand Hospitality Group and Restaurant Management yeah, yeah. and also Danielle Landry. She does the marketing for all four restaurants that they have going, really going great guns right now. Um, one is a new one I have not tried. The only one, Gail's Fine Ice Cream Under the Overpass. Overpass Merchant curbside on Government Street, kind of in mid-city, a little beyond, and then uh, Junior's on Harrison, Harrison Avenue in New Orleans. So thank you all so much yes. for being here. Thank we you. love talking food. <laughs> we love the idea of a variety of different concepts and flavors, and we love the idea of places that can bring people together. So thank you so much for creating that opportunity for the rest of us who maybe can't cook as well as <laughs> Chef Brett Monleon and maybe don't want to do the dishes. We just like to eat out. That's what we like to do. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you've been working with Nick on how to promote these concepts that are different and kind of working on a few for the future. Yeah, for sure. We, um, we're so blessed to have so many different concepts within the brand. Um, and it's really kind of grown uh, astronomically in the last year now that yes. the pandemic has kind of come to a close thank you Jesus yes thank you. <laughs> but we were we were actually very fortunate during the pandemic to have so many different avenues and options to be able to bring to the people as Nick mentioned sure. um, previously uh, because we have the two food trucks we have a catering van as well um, in addition to the four brick and mortar um, locations which are across you know southeast Louisiana between Baton Rouge and New Orleans which is um, hopefully we're touching as many palettes as we can sure. with those different concepts. Sure. Now, I recently went to Overpass and had the chicken fried chicken, which the lunch specials are delicious. It's really like your grandmother, your mom <laughs> would make, but it's sure. very light. Yes. Um, I really just enjoyed that it was light, it was lean, but it had gravy and it had crust, which to me is so good about That's fried chicken. Sweet. But it wasn't greasy. It wasn't heavy. Right. And so you can tell that there's care taken in each step in that preparation. That's just one dish. But I've also been to Junior's on Harrison. And it's the same thing. There seems to be a lot of care in each and every recipe and presentation. So how do you all get that quality so different? I mean, so, so good with so many different dishes. Uh, the the gentleman that could answer that is is stage left right now but yeah no I, I mean I, I think it's it definitely comes down to the detail for us you know I, j just like you said I think anybody can make a chicken fried chicken yeah. um, for us it's it's how do you finish it you know and, yes. and then more importantly how do you how do you prep it right. you know is it is it are we brining the chicken how are we flouring the chicken are we using AP or we you know is it a blend of flowers that mm -hmm. we're using what kind of herbs are we finishing it with? Are we finishing it with soft herbs, harder? I mean, citrus, th those are big components that I think kind of elevate a dish mm -hmm. from, from good to, to great. And Brett's been absolutely amazing with, with, you know, taking that to a whole nother level with all the restaurants. So. Well, we have a few pictures of some of the things that y'all have done, some mm -hmm. of the different events you've done, some of the things you've been involved with. And Chef Brett Monteleon was recently competing in the Louisiana Seafood Cook-Off. And that was 12 different of the best chefs. I'm so glad I wasn't a judge. <laughs> I don't know that I could have gotten through 12 dishes and it would have been hard to pick. Yes. So this is Juniors on Harrison Avenue. And if you're listening on radio, I wish you could see that. But it's a very long and beautifully decorated table in kind of a patio setting. So y'all do, yep. of course, weddings, receptions, things like that. Yeah, that's our private dining space, our Oasis Balcony, most popular private uh, option that we have across the board for between all four locations. And that's a picture of all the chefs and the yes. lieutenant governor 
Center that were uh, in Lafayette in, in conjunction with Eat Lafayette Week. And Chef, Chef Amanda Cussie is the one who won with Villa Harlequin out of Lake Charles. And there's a picture Let's of Brett. Let's go. With, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, Gerald Grunig was the co-host uh, yeah. with Chef Corey Barr, and he did such a great job. Now, tell us about your sous chef. Uh, yes, it's uh, Chef Errol Harrison. Uh, they got to give him credit. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So they're actually at uh, at Nalfi in that picture. We took uh, third place uh, seafood uh, this past weekend. Oh, so. where at, was that? It was uh, at, at the Sugar at, Mill. Yeah, the sugar at the Sugar, sugar Mill. Mill and yeah. wine. Okay, New I want to wine and food experience. Yep. Okay, now. so I tried to get in to different places with the New Orleans food and wine experience. Uh huh. Kind of sold out. Yeah. The ones that I could go to, you know, at certain times. But what? Are, you don't even have to wait till the New Orleans food and wine experience. You can go have it. Yes. Anytime if yep. you're in New Orleans at Juniors. Yeah. And so you do That's a lot of showcases. Do. Yeah. yeah. Zoo to do. Uh huh. At the uh, uh, Audubon Zoo in New Orleans, got to support our zoo. Yep. Yep. Top three zoos in America. Yes, it's, they are. It's truly. impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Uncle Tony and Michael. <laughs> That's our eating a steak at the Merchant. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. that was like maybe a golf tournament. It is. It is. That's a golf tournament. Yeah. I mean, we do. Danielle can touch on this. We do. Uh, and there's probably not an email that goes by of, hey, can you come donate something that we're not, of course. We're, we're not at, you know. Yeah. Well, you're involved in a lot of different things in both communities. As much as we can do with yep. the community, like he said, it's so great. This, um, this restaurant group is so into giving back to the community sure. and, and giving back to the people. And it really shows with us being in a neighborhood um, and not, you know, on, in downtown in the hustle and bustle. I do like that you plant yourselves in neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And of course, oysters. You gotta oh, love oysters. Louisiana oysters. 100%. oysters. And I love that you you really try to focus on ways to highlight Louisiana seafood. Absolutely, especially at Juniors. That's really the the key focus there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a tough market. You know, it's a very competitive market in New Orleans. It is the most competitive market <laughs> in the world. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, um, tell us a little bit about some of the things you might have coming up. Do you have some events coming up oh, where people can come taste Never. a little bit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing going on. Yeah, we have a lot going on. We actually have quite a few big private events going on um, coming up. A lot of appreciation days for different corporate groups that have booked the food trucks. Um, Oshner, the Hilton New Orleans Riverside. We have um, a couple of sororities up here in LSU yes. that are planning for their, their sorority rush week and bid day. Um, but... We look forward to participating again in the Zoo to Do next year. We have committed to that. And then um, coming up this holiday season, we'll do holidays um, in Baton Rouge sure. through the Junior League, which is so much fun. And you don't want to miss that. No, and it's so much fun, and everybody's welcome to come and see the curbside truck there. And hopefully we'll get the Gales truck out uh, this year as well. Oh, Gales is getting a truck. Oh, we have we a have Gales a truck. truck. Oh, we have wow. one. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's so you, in action. So do you do just events or food truck events, or do you do like private parties with the ice cream truck mostly private, private. yeah yep. mostly private um, like when i was little you could chase chase the ice cream truck. Yeah, no, we're not doing I that. I taught my son, don't chase the ice cream truck. They're different now. Yeah. <laughs> but so people can come to Gales or they can hire you to come and bring ice cream for an event. Correct. You can reach us. Um, we have uh, contact information forms on the website that you can reach. It comes directly to me. And I send you information based on your location, your number of guests, um, what you're interested in having. You can do something with all of the concepts uh, across the brand. I can have all four come to your event, depending on how large it is and what yeah. you're looking to yep looking to have which is good for for bigger events yeah you know, absolutely to have that sure, variation community of, events. Yeah, you know so um what is your favorite flavor at gales or can Ooh. you pick uh lemon berry icebox pie is pretty good and then we do a uh it's cortado crunch mm -hmm. it's like an espresso based steep ice cream for you know 48 hours and then heath bar toffee and it's oh good. my yeah, goodness yeah. Yeah. i've never met an ice cream i really don't like Me <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so what about you what's your favorite um i like the little monsters it's uh like cookies and cream basically but it's blue yes. so it has a nice fun uh color to it and it's really popular especially during the summer months yeah. you know so what are your hours i know the restaurant hours are you know kind of similar a lot of restaurants yep. are similar yep. do you have any late night um Stay uh, open late on any of them? When, when the Tigers are at, in the Valley. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we kind of, or maybe the Saints. Uh, yeah, maybe the Saints, so. <laughs> Saints are winning too. Yeah. Hey, um, hold my table for the LSU Florida game in the Dome. Done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Done. Um, Sunday, so huh? um, how can people get in touch with you if they want to talk to you about catering? So they can email me, uh, Danielle at HuffMarshan.com. 
Um, or again, if you go to the website, any of those forms for any of the different restaurants would come directly to me. Um, or you can call any of the restaurants and you press option four for catering information and it goes directly to me. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Nick, you've just pulled together, you and Lon Marchand has pu pulled together just a great opportunity for people to just enjoy, just dine and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and um, make sure I get it to Gales, yes, and then the just Gales. keep going to the others, too. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have an ice cream well, party. we've been talking with Danielle Landry and Nick Huff, and in our prior segment, we were talking with Chef Brent Monale Brett Monteleon. And then coming up next, we're going to be speaking with uh, Loretta Foreman and her daughter, her granddaughter, Sarah Fulmer, about the Cottage Tea Room. And we're also going to be talking with James Lee about Louisiana Swamp Watch. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Cancer is our sole focus at Mary Bird Perkins. Every decision we make is centered around furthering care and lessening the burden of this disease. That absolute focus on cancer allows us to provide breakthrough treatments as we continue to raise the bar and enhance patient outcomes as Louisiana's premier cancer care organization. Whatever cancer sends our way, together, we triumph. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Money, wellness, fun. Rocket Ripe Radio takes you all across Louisiana and the nation with guests who live life to the fullest. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. I'm Dr. K. Solar. You're going to love it. Join us every week when we cover everything under the sun. Live and learn with the Wright Sisters. Politics, health, music and entertainment, local language. Rocket Ripe Radio. You're going to love it. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser from the great state of Louisiana. Hurricane Ida has brought great devastation to our community. In time of need, Louisianans always step up and help their neighbor. This time is no different. We'll help our neighbors and friends get back as we always do. If you need help or know of someone that needs help or would like to volunteer or make a donation, go to volunteerlouisiana.gov. We are Louisiana strong. Thank you. As AmeriCorps members and volunteers, we do more than talk about our core values. We take action and commit to making our community stronger. At AmeriCorps, my commitment to equity gives every student a strong start. Our compassion brings food and friendship to neighbors in need. My determination protects sparks in my community. Now more than ever, your community needs you. What's at your core? Learn more at AmeriCorps.gov. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar since 2014. With a full calendar available on the website 24-7. Clickable links to artists and venues. View the entire weekend lineup at a glance and plan your outings with your friends. View professional recordings of local live musicians. Watch interviews with people in our music community and find additional resources. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar. Properties real estate experts Jeff Taylor and Reed Taylor understand Louisiana and Mississippi real estate. Whether you're interested in buying or selling large or small tracts of property in Louisiana or Mississippi, Jeff and Reed are the right realtors for whatever you need. Contact Jeff Taylor at 601-248-9433 or Reed Taylor at 601-248-9614. Whitetailproperties.com. 
At Hightower Dental Concepts, we take a compassionate approach to family dentistry. Our goal is to make your dental experience comfortable and informative so you can make the best dental care decisions for you and your family. We're welcoming new patients to our dental family at Essen and Perkins, and we look forward to meeting you soon at Hightower Dental Concepts. Call us today at 769-0031 or request your appointment at info at dentalconceptsbr.com. There's a joy of life you'll find only in Louisiana. A spirit of celebration that takes your senses places they've never been before. Where expressions of joy are an art form and our way of life. Where an abundance of good food, good times, and great music means there's more than enough to go around. Come one, come y'all. Come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm John Goodman inviting you to visit louisianatravel.com and plan your getaway today. Dr. K. Solar. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. We're thinking about changing my name. I know. <laughs> a billion Y'all dollar weigh Betsy, in. Y'all weigh Betsy. in. I'm just saying. <laughs> weigh in on the Facebook page and see what Betsy's new name That's should right. be for the rest of hurricane season. That's right. We got to we got to get a new one. Well, we're excited that we have James Lee. He's returned to visit with us about a nonprofit that he started called Louisiana Swamp Watch, and we knew him for Americans through Americans for Prosperity, and so it was just a great opportunity for you to come and update us. We haven't talked to you in a while, and so we want to know exactly what you're doing and how did this whole new thing, this nonpartisan watchdog group, what inspired you to do it? Absolutely. Well, uh, thanks again, Betsy, for having me on. And we always Dr. love Dr. seeing Dr. Solar, you. I love to be on with you this time. Last time it was a solo show with I me know. and Betsy. Yeah. Well, that's because um, I've just been out of pocket a few times. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you got to take a vacation when you can, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Got to leave Betsy alone a little bit. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, I miss you, but I will we'll we'll carry behave. on. That's right. right. I'll oh, behave. Yeah. <laughs> and we definitely leave her alone on hurricane season, apparently. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, no, I, I appreciate y'all having me on to talk about Louisiana Swamp Watch. I think the last time I was here, I was with, uh, I was still with Americans for Prosperity, and we were talking about some important budget reforms that we were trying to get passed through on the on the state uh, on the ballot in the November 2020 election. And you know, through my work with Americans for Prosperity, you know, we've we talked about this last time I was on the show. Louisiana has such a great culture. We have the best people we in do. the world, but so many people are leaving Louisiana every single day because we just have the wrong political policies in place. And so I worked with a great organization at Americans for Prosperity that really fought and tried to put a positive vision forward for the state. And there's a ton of other great organizations in the state that put forward these positive visions. And you know, you can have the best ideas, you can work harder than anybody else to try to get legislators and to get the public behind mm -hmm. your ideas. But at the end of the day, we realized that we lost time and time again on trying to fix the problems that plague the state because special interest and what we call the swamp, that's why we're Louisiana Swamp Watch, <laughs> the political swamp that exists here in Baton Rouge is so powerful and it controls so many legislators, it controls so much of the public opinion in the state that we couldn't beat them with just having the best ideas and working harder than them. So we started Louisiana Swamp Watch to start looking into them and exposing them. So tell us a little bit about, you know, we talked a lot about different policies and, you know, you and I both agree and I think Kay would agree as well. We prefer less government, not more. We're not talking about assistance programs where it's needed. We're talking about wasteful spending. We're talking about too many dedicated funds where we can't free up money for things that are needed now, not perhaps 30 years ago. Yep. And so we just have kind of some difficult challenges that other states have unburdened or changed themselves from. And I don't think there's anybody, nobody wants the government making the decision for each and every dollar they spend. And the kind of dedicated funds do that. They say we can only spend on this, not on that. And it's good for things that benefit our state and that move small business forward, that protect our citizens, that are, you know, politically uh, wise for families to make their own decisions and not so intrusive. I mean, business especially. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad you mentioned families because I think one of the things that we've learned so much in the last two years is about our public education system. 
that's, pa- that's parents a big one. having their kids at home, having virtual school going on, and just seeing everything that's happened in public education over the last two years that parents have seen in the great, what we call the great parent awakening, where they're trying to take more control over their kids' education from mm-hmm. what we call here in Louisiana the public education swamp. That's something that we've put a lot of information about on our website, laswampwatch.com, because you look at it, we have the 49th ranked public education system in the country. You come with an idea to fix it, and everybody comes out tooth and nail and fights to kill it. Even stuff as simple as providing transparency to parents, just to see how their tax dollars, it's not the state's tax dollars, it's not the school district's tax dollars, it's your tax dollars and my tax dollars that fund public education. There was a simple bill last year, and this year as well, to say, school boards have to say how they're spending every dollar, parents should have that transparency. Well, the Louisiana School Boards Association, that doesn't exist to protect parents, it doesn't exist to serve students, it exists to protect the interests of the public education swamp that exists, exists in our state. They launched a full court lobbying campaign against that, paid three lobbyists over $150,000 in taxpayer money wow. to stop taxpayers and parents from seeing where their dollars are going. When you talk about giving parents a choice to take their money, their tax dollars, and spend it at a school that's different than the public school in their district, these organizations, the Louisiana Federation of Teachers, the Louisiana Association of Educators, these unions, the public, edu- uh, the school boards association, and the superintendents association, the public education swamp, they come out and they cash in the checks that they've written to legislators all across the state to kill it because they don't want parents having a choice, they don't want parents having transparency, and that's the education swamp. At the end of the day, they have more power than parents do, and they win, and they hold back Louisianans and keep kids trapped in a failing education system. Well, those are strong words, James Lee. Those are very strong words. I try to be nice, but sometimes, you know, it it, it angers me seeing kids trapped in a failing education system Mm -hmm. and seeing us lose when we try to do something to help kids help parents, and at the end of the day, it's good for taxpayers and it's good for the state. Well, perhaps that it's not completely transparent because they don't want the criticism of how money's spent. But one of the things that I've been made aware of that plague the system is a lot of overpaid consultants (laughs) for the school system, but you don't know what they do, but many of those are attorneys, many of those are other people. I'm not disparaging anybody who is a consultant. I'm just saying that, like for example, Kay and I both invested in private school for our children in East Baton Rouge Parish. It felt like the thing that we needed to do, that was our parental choice. We still pay the same amount of taxes as everybody else or pay the same amount of taxes as we're charged. And every now and then I wonder, you know, how it is that our kids have not moved forward And I graduated high school quite a while ago, a few decades ago, and it seems like the same difficulties are there. And so if we've got hundreds of millions of dollars, like East Baton Rouge Parish School System, for example, not picking on anybody, I have friends on the school board, you know, 450 or so million dollars. And I just think it'd be nice to be able to say, okay, what are we spending on this? What are we spending on that? If anybody ever wants to look, maybe we don't want to look. Maybe it's too much. We don't want to focus on that. But the point is, we have the choice. And, and it we're should be pro-choice as easy. about transparency. <laughs> it, you know, we're and very it, pro-choice it, about transparency. It, it, and it should be as easy as possible for a parent mm-hmm. or a taxpayer, anybody to get that information. Because even if you're a taxpayer without children like me, I pay property taxes in East Baton Rouge Parish. I'm funding our school system. Right, me too. I have just as I have as much of a right as anybody to hold them accountable for how they're spending that money. And the East Baton Rouge Parish School Board is a great example of when school boards say they're being transparent, they're not. They just got hundreds of millions of dollars in federal funds through the COVID relief package, and they made this big deal about we we're going to do this transparency dashboard and show you where the money is going. Well, they only listed two out of three of the categories of the money that they got. And they list very broad categories. Like you said, you can't see to the transaction level who's getting paid with these funds, who's running these programs, how much money is going to X special interest. And, and, and it's transparency in name only, but they did that because they knew this legislation was coming that would force them to be transparent. And so everybody holds it up as this great example of, look, boards are being transparent on their own. No, they're not. You can go to, again, you can go to our website, uh, laswampwatch.com, our Facebook page, Louisiana Swamp Watch. Our Twitter uh, handle is LA Swamp Watch. And you can see, we, we put information out about the East Baton Rouge Parish Transparency Dashboard. It doesn't cover nearly half of what 
you would need to know to find out where funds are going, where's waste, where's mismanagement. And, and, and they do it to cover the behinds. And at the end of the day, it's not real transparency. And it's going to take them being forced to be transparent for taxpayers, parents, even students to hold them accountable. That's wow. just one example of the swamp. And I hate that we only have about 30 seconds left because, James, you have so much to share. But basically what we're saying is why hide the truth? Exactly. Why hide from us? And why does the swamp hold so much power to keep the truth from coming out and to keep and to hold us back at the end of the day? That's that's what it's all about. But you about. can't They're have real change, back. right, unless you have the truth. Yeah. And everyone accepts the truth as being what is, is. <laughs> <laughs> that, Give us that definition we, now. <laughs> yep, that's why we always cite our sources. Like I said, on, on the website, you can see more about uh, the education swamp. You can see more about every everything that we've looked at, all the different special interests in Louisiana. It, again, it's uh, laswampwatch.com. Louisiana Swamp Watch on Facebook, at LA Swamp Watch on Twitter. Well, James, thanks for bringing us an education yeah. <laughs> on transparency, because it feels like there's a lot more that we could learn. So we'd love to have you come back about that. And, so, and, and please go make a comment if you'd like to on James Lee's Louis, LA Swamp Watch on any of his social media or whatever, and let him know what you're interested in finding out more about. We're going to be right back with Sarah Ulmer and her grandmother, Loretta Foreman, talking about mentor kids talking about kids yep. we're talking about mentoring kids and we'll be right back with rocket right At Hightower Dental Concepts, we take a compassionate approach to family dentistry. Our goal is to make your dental experience comfortable and informative so you can make the best dental care decisions for you and your family. We're welcoming new patients to our dental family at Essen and Perkins, and we look forward to meeting you soon at Hightower Dental Concepts. Call us today at 769-0031 or request your appointment at info at dentalconceptsbr.com. Some call it joie de vie, the joy of life. In Louisiana, it's our way of life. From music that shakes up your senses to food that wakes up your palate. That joy vibrates in every note we play and spices up every meal we serve. So come live life to the fullest. Come one, come y'all, come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm Sean Ardway inviting you to plan your trip at louisianatravel.com. I'm Katie, Operation Manager here at Old School Barbecue. We're excited about all of the changes here at Old School, and we'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy some delicious barbecue at Old School prices. We feature brisket, chicken, ribs, sausage, and the Boss Hog Pulled Pork Sandwich voted best deal in town. We also have live music Friday and Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. 10655 Corsi Boulevard. We can't wait to see you. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, in the heart of the Denno Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. The use of opioids in addition to opioids is on the rise, especially in Louisiana, and I wanted to be a part of the solution. If you have a family member or loved one that you are concerned about with regard to opioid use, please call my clinic, Advantage Health Solutions. You can speak with my nurse or you can speak with myself, and we will talk to you about how to get that person into treatment, and we'll tailor what we do to your needs, and we'll do what we can to get your loved one in treatment and onto the path to health. As AmeriCorps members and volunteers, we do more than talk about our core values. We take action and commit to making our community stronger. At AmeriCorps, my commitment to equity gives every student a strong start. Our compassion brings food and friendship to neighbors in need. My determination protects Sparks in my community. Now more than ever, your community needs you. 
What's at your core? Learn more at AmeriCorps.gov. Properties real estate experts Jeff Taylor and Reed Taylor understand Louisiana and Mississippi real estate. Whether you're interested in buying or selling large or small tracts of property in Louisiana or Mississippi, Jeff and Reed are the right realtors for whatever you need. Contact Jeff Taylor at 601-248-9433 or Reed Taylor at 601-248-9614. Whitetailproperties.com. Cancer is our sole focus at Mary Bird Perkins. Every decision we make is centered around furthering care and lessening the burden of this disease. That absolute focus on cancer allows us to provide breakthrough treatments as we continue to raise the bar and enhance patient outcomes as Louisiana's premier cancer care organization. Whatever cancer sends our way, together, we triumph. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. back with Rocket Right. We are so glad that you could continue to enjoy a few of the people that we wanted to introduce you to. You know, we love meeting new people. Uh We love hearing about what people are doing in the community. We love some smart decisions. We love it when people do something that's going to really invest in the people in their community, especially young people. So we're really glad to introduce you to the owners of the Cottage Cafe and Tea Room, Loretta Foreman, and her granddaughter, Sarah Ulmer. Thank y'all so much for coming. Well, thank you for having us. Sure. Uh So when our friend James Lee mentioned that you had reopened a building that I've been to for several different things, um, right there on Jewel Road Mm -hmm. in Central, Jewel near Hooper, um, I was thrilled because I think that it's a beautiful location. It's very nice. And you've owned the building for a period of time. Yeah, I've owned the building for many years. We have three beautiful acres there, and we have a nice venue in the back. Yes, you do. So um, there's a lot. We did a lot with it over the years, and um, we just love it. And people in Central are thrilled that I'm back because I started in 84 on Sullivan Road, Mm -hmm. and the state took that for the road. They four-laned it, and so when that happens, you they take your property, and then you have to find a new venue and uh, new property. And so we moved to to Jewel Road, and it's been just a wonderful experience. I love the place. As a matter of fact, we flooded at our home in Comet Hills, and I wanted to move in that house on Joy Road, but it wasn't to be. But um, Sarah grew up in the tea room when she was nine. We have pictures of her coming with her little apron and just <laughs> walking up to one of the ladies and saying, oh, this hat would look so nice on you. And they would put it on whether they wanted it or not. They would put it on. That's sweet. Yeah, it really so is. Sweet. And so um, she really did. She really loved it. and. Um, grew up in it and so my joy with a lot of it was mentoring i love to be around young people i love young girls and i started that in 84 the mentoring program and i've carried it to where we are today and uh, the parents uh are sign uh uh really that their confirmation that they're allowing their children uh to come and learn social etiquette following rules doing things you don't necessarily want to do, um, and growing, growing uh, in maturity. And uh, we just see so many different things over the years. And I still run into some of the girls that I've mentored over the years, and they'll tell me, 
that they learn so much from that that just have helped them in their life about just coping and dealing with all kinds of situations that you wouldn't even think would happen in a tea room, but they do. They do. <laughs> yeah. Well, social graces yeah. have somewhat fallen by the wayside. There's still those of us that really do believe that the social graces and the way to civilly treat others um, are, are so important. Yeah. It is important, and it's important when you go for job interviews, and it's important when you go for college interviews or different types of social mm -hmm. organizations. And so a lot of people just don't have the time necessarily to, and it's not part of their daily life, to be able to teach your children. Right. And so the fact right. that you do that is such a blessing. It's a blessing for us, too, because we really get close to the girls, and we watch them mature, you know, and we see them work through their problems, and it's a blessing. It really is for both of us. We really do enjoy it. So, so you said that uh, you had been closed for a while and just right. reopened right. recently. Right. So tell us about that. Well, I retired 12 years ago when my husband retired. And uh, then I leased the property, and it had it was quite a few things. It was a catering business. It I've was been a there fabric for fabric store. Yes. Yeah, it, uh, it was a fabric store, and then it was an antique store. So um, uh, I've been thinking about it, you know, as I reached my 80th birthday. I thought, Happy you know, birthday. thank you. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm not ready. I'm not ready to give any of this up. I still love playing. I still like being a little girl. I still like tea parties. So Sarah and I talked about it seriously. She had a good job. And I said, we could do this together. And I would love it because you're 26 and I'm 80 and I can't do a lot of <laughs> things that I love you that. can do and you add so much life to it and so here we just took off and here we are so you re reopened <laughs> three reopened, weeks ago and so tell me how it works tell oh me my goodness. tell me on a daily basis like I mean how, how does it work there as far as your hours okay. and, and people participating okay tell so um, it's a cafe and a tea room so our cafe is open from 11 to 2 Wednesday through Sunday and then we serve afternoon tea, which is just tea and scones or tea and desserts. Um, and we do that any day of the week that we're open. And then high tea is by reservation only. And that includes soup, sandwiches, scones, desserts, tea, the whole shebang, basically. Um, and so that's basically where we're at right now. We're hoping to expand with parties and events. Um, we're looking forward to the holidays with that. Yes. So. So let's say that a few moms and their daughters want to come for high tea. Sure. So what would be the process that they would go through to come to high tea? Because there's not a lot of places that offer And when it. is high tea? High tea is any day that we're open, Wednesday through Sunday, as long as we have one day advance notice. Um, and they can just give us a call. Um, our phone number and more information for us is on our website, the Cottage Cafe and Tea Room .com. Um, We're also on Facebook, the Cottage Cafe and Tea Room, and on Instagram. So, is there a certain time of day you would do high tea, or could you do high tea at just about any time with any a reservation? Time of day. As long as we have a reservation, um, some people like to do it early and have it as lunch. Some people like it in the afternoon as a snack, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Just depends. And so you could actually have like a baby shower, a bridal shower, high tea. Exactly. You can do that. Last weekend we actually had a, a baby shower for a party of 12. They mm -hmm. had tea. And this coming weekend we have a bridal shower. So we're very excited. That's wonderful. That's always fun to me. I just enjoy yeah. the little, little nibbles and, you know, I like grazing. So I like to taste a little bit of everything. And then or do you give kind of an etiquette lesson if people want that for the high tea? What's appropriate? What's not? The courses? I think, Manners, the, I think like the tea girls, and that's what we call them, our tea girls, uh, I think they're very good at that. We've trained them well, and they love what they do, so they put so much of themselves into talking to people and explaining, you know, different parts of the tea and what have it just becomes natural for them, I think. And we also have a little girls' tea room, and uh, if you're 4 to 11, Okay, you can come. That You have to have a reservation for that. And we're, we're already seeing that grandmothers are bringing their little granddaughters. And, it's, and there's small tables and small chairs. And so grandmothers come in with their hats. And then the little girls have hats, or we have hats for them. And they sit down and they have this tea on the level of a small child. 
I and, love that. And I think that's that. wonderful. Yes, and what a is. great timing getting rebooted with right. this, with summer coming up right. and kids being right. out of school right. and the grandparents looking for something really cool right. to be able right. to right. enjoy yeah. the day right. exactly. with their grandchild. Exactly. I mean, yes. how cool is that? Yeah, that is. It's, and yeah. it's fun to watch. It really is because the, the yeah. little ones are so excited. The other day, a little girl had her birthday party and she said to her grandmother, this is the best birthday party I've ever had. And we laughed about it, and we said, wonder what this is really all about. And it was about the sugar cubes. Because little girls <laughs> the don't Who know, would think they such never small saw, things that you Yeah, <laughs> I never saw a sugar cube, and she could put it in her teapot, which already had lem strawberry lemonade in it, and make it sweet, and then pour it in the cup, and then make some more. It was wonderful to watch, and she yeah. was in her glory. Oh, yeah. that is so, so wonderful. Such just things that we take for granted. Yes. Uh, that a lot of kids haven't seen no. and you go yeah, yeah. very cool. well you know if you think about it they're at school and they're sort of having 15 minutes 20 minutes to eat and they kind of shovel it in and then you know just running and going and fast food and all of that this is a chance to sit down mm -hmm. have conversation mm -hmm. exactly. enjoy each other and not be in a rush and I think it bridges the gap I mean it was something I always enjoyed doing with my mom and my my grandmothers when I was a child and I think that that's what's so interesting about it and fun is that it's something that is good for their generation and it's good for the younger generation too mm -hmm. and they see their friends doing it and mm -hmm. it, you know girls like to be prissy let's just yes, sure. you know we like to dress up yes. we like to be feminine and we like to do something that makes us feel good right. like we've been treated right. by something yeah. to something very special I am still a little girl in that way. I like it me when people too. enjoy um, being hospitable to me. Yes, exactly. You know, and want to show them appreciation. Well, back down to our 30 seconds. So this is crazy, but I think that that's wonderful. You know, uh, I would love to take my granddaughter out to that. I'm thinking a lot of people It'd listening are thinking this Belle. is a great summer fun day uh, uh, for generations yes, uh, it to is. enjoy. So. It is. I think we're going to yeah. see more and more of, you know, second, third generations coming. Yeah. But we are seeing a lot of, uh, I opened in 1984, mm -hmm. and I still, the, some of the, fir one of the first client customers that I had showed up uh, and said, I can't believe you're doing this again, and we have we can come back. Well, and we just can't I'm stop. I'm glad you're doing it That's again. Right. Thank you. And, and we know that if you're going to rock, rock it, it make, make sure, sure you rock, rock it right. right with the Cottage Cafe and Tea Room. Rocket Right Show with Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar is brought to you by these generous sponsors. City Group Hospitality, including City Pork Bar and Brasserie, City Pork Highland, City Slice at LSU, Spoke and Hub, Beausoleil Coastal Cuisine, and Proverbial Wine Bistro. Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center with locations in Baton Rouge, Gonzales, Covington, Hammond, Homa and Natchez, White Tail Properties, Realtors Jeff Taylor and Reed Taylor, Advantage Health Solutions and Dr. Boyd Michael Helm, Trip Chat, the mobile app, download and find your fun, High Tower Dental Concepts, Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, the Louisiana Office of Tourism, Louisiana is a trip, takeone.com, and Volunteer Louisiana. We are grateful for your sponsorship of the Rocket Right Show.